Hey guys, Adam here, and welcome to another episode of On the Couch Rewind. And today, Godzilla! That's right, Godzilla is back in theaters this week, and I'm here to review the first original God Japanese classic, Gojira. It's Japanese for Gorilla Whale, okay? He can still kick your ass. And as and if you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, it is because I am, well... I'm cooking meth and I lost my eye in the explosion, okay? No, seriously, I was cooking meth and I lost my... Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, Gojira. What do I think about this movie? I love it. I love this movie. This movie is what started it all for me. Gojira, the 1954 classic, I would not be the monster-loving fanatic I am today if it wasn't for this movie. That is how much I love this movie. To me, this is perfection. This is every bit of how you do a science fiction movie. In every, in every sense of the word. So, what's the plot? Well, Godzilla attacks Tokyo and a, and a young couple have to try to convince their scientist to, I mean, to hand over a very devastating weapon in order to, that could be the only thing to destroy Godzilla. And as, and as many people know, that this is, that Godzilla is a very huge, quite literally, metaphor for nuclear, uh, for nuclear annihilation. I mean, hell, he was mutated b due to an H-bomb. This is, this is how you do science fiction. Yeah, people are gonna, like, scoff at it for being a dude in a suit, black and white guy with an eye patch, you know, the usual. Don't. This, this is a classic movie. This holds cultural significance. I don't know how much more I can say about this movie other than watch it. Go beyond the fact that it's Japanese. Go beyond the fact that it's a guy in a rubber suit and he's stomping around on a set crushing miniatures. The fact that this is every bit a classic as Gone with the Wind is should be enough. What's so great about this movie isn't the fact that Godzilla is destroying a city. It's the human it's the human characters. It's the aftermath of his destruction. How, what are the humans going to do? And that's what's great. Godzilla may be, may be the title character. He may be the star. But when it comes down to it, he's also, he's really just the cause of the, he's the catalyst, I should say. He is, he's a natural disaster, quite literally. He is a hurricane, a, a typhoon, an earthquake. He is the fucking apocalypse all rolled into one, destroying everything in its path. He is a walking natural disaster. He is a force of nature. That is what he is. And it is the human story. That makes this so great because it is not just struggling to survive at a, a giant mutated dinosaur, but also struggling to survive the moral dilemma of how can we destroy this monster without resorting to going back to nuclear testing. Dr. Sirizawa had the answer. Unfortunately, the, the weapon was so devastating of its own that he feared it being misused 
if he ever revealed it. And that's why I actually consider Dr. Sarazawa, who I'm dressed as, my, one of my favorite characters. He understood what was more important. His morality, I mean, his soul, or the lives of millions. And it was, but even to the very end, when he decided to sacrifice himself, after destroying all his research, all the proof of this devastating weapon, the last thing he had to do was take his own life so that no one, and I repeat, no one could use this weapon ever again. Because if they did, people, it would surely become more devastating than, the, than, than another nuclear bomb. That's what's great about this movie. It is a, it's, it's a warning. It's not just a movie. It's a warning. It's a warning of what will happen if we continue to use weapons of mass destruction. And what happens when scientists decide, uh, also uh, discover something that could be devastating. Because I mean, scientists, I mean, some scientists aren't as, aren't as, um, aren't as heart, golden hearted as people would are led to believe. Because they can come, they can discover things that can end up destroying people, destroying lives. That's what happened with the Manhattan Project. Um, excuse me. So yeah, this. This movie is just, it's a masterpiece to me. I love this movie. I don't know how much more I can say about it. I don't, and I mean, I will say this too. I mean, yeah, the special effects aren't up to date. They are, it is a 1950s movie. But you can go, be, go beyond that with how beautiful the, the movie is shot. How, how engaging the human aspect of that story is and just how heartbreaking it is to see people die at the hands of this monster it's it's that good and with that said i give gojira the 1954 classic a 10 out of 10. yeah it's 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 outdated. I mean, yeah, cinemat, uh, visually, it's outdated. People are going to probably prefer the new one over this one. Don't. If, you're, if you want to see a good gut monster movie, watch this. Watch this. This should be your introduction to Godzilla. You should always have this be your introduction. I don't know how much more I can stress that. This is a beautiful movie. Yeah, again, I say it's a classic like Gone with the Wind. It, to me it is. Because it, st it still stands the test of time, despite some of its technical limitations, but the message is still there. The, the, the significance of it culturally is still there. This is just as relevant as it was 60 years ago. So, with that said, how does the American version stand up? I'll give you that next time. Bye.